when I first came here, um, it, it was definitely um, more rigid. And the scene was like, a, it was put together, you know, with a, a, a group of different crews. Mm. And it was like, you know, either you can paint here, you can't paint here, and you should probably put your camera away. Mm-hmm. Each each couple years, I, I I came back and came back, and I mean, we're now in 2024, and that was 1997 when I first came here, so... Wow. It's a whole new world. Yeah, it's a whole new world, and 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 now the UK is like really, really getting noticed and recognized on an international level for like very top, high grade graffiti. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Street Culture TV. Instagram UK Frontline. Fox created. Killer Keller. And we're here to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller podcast. Three, two, one. Yo, ladies okay. and gentlemen. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. The noise is like infectious around it. Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Keller podcast live and direct. Central London or central as you could be. Reporting live from Chrome and Black. Zombie land. Uh, we've got enough people in the place at the moment doing their thing, which is a beautiful thing. Uh, big shout out to all the sharers and carers. People have been clocking us from the jump, supporting house sponsors, the mighty GK Nifty Heads of a massive 100,000 play to earn NFTs to give away to the streets. Just hit the link in the description or go to gkniftyheads.com and get ready for Hoddle Wars Summer 2024. Worldwide. And worldwide is the subject of today's conversation. Hailing originally British Columbia, Canada, for those of you who ain't got your geographics correct, but now reside in the Philippines, keeping himself to himself. No, he's not. He's global. He's over here. Graph writer. Extraordinary. Fresco inside the place. How are you, my brother? <laughs> I'm fantastic, bro. How are you doing? Oh, man, it's great to connect with you. How long have you been over? I've been over here for now about a week and a half. Um, but I've come here, as you know, I've quite a few times in the past. Yeah. And uh, it's now becoming something that annually that I do and I come back over here. So... Like um, you know, I was explaining earlier on, it's it's a uh, it's a bit of a pinnacle place for me, um, where I come and meet up with a lot of people from all over the world mm. to uh, paint graffiti and and you know unite ideas and you know like you know there's a lot of growth happening in graffiti right now. Yeah. I feel like uh, the last ten fifteen years is is really changed and you know. Um, it's creating a lot more opportunity for the people that are out there doing that, doing their thing, writing yeah. their letters, and, and, and developing their skills and their styles. You know, um, that culture is is really blossoming all over the place. Yeah. So. Where do you think that elevation comes from? Well, supply and demand. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> we're in the right place for that. <laughs> the stock is full, right? Like you know, um, once people ca- catch catch notion of it and, mm. and start to you know appreciate it. Then, then the gears are turning and, and things change and people start to socially more accept it and then, and then open up their whole imagination to the application and, and how it's done and then they start learning about the culture and now they just want to be involved. So yeah. it's, it's, it's a really cool thing, you know. It's, a, it's a, an establishment all over the world. It's, it's happening. You know? It is happening. Yeah. And you've seen it from the inception of the 90s for you coming over to the UK, which, you know, you've, you've already explained, expressed how different it was compared to now. Ab- ab- absolutely. I mean, when I came here, the first time I came here, I was like, oh, man, I, I, was, I was adolescence. I was 17 years old. I came here with my family, and I've always been obsessed with graffiti. I, I picked up my first spray can in 1993, but didn't really actually start to rattle them until about 97, 98. Mm-hmm. And I wanted, I intended on coming here and painting. And I was like, oh, yeah, I saw all the places to paint and all the boroughs, and I just thought it was amazing, right? But really didn't understand. I'm not, like, being in Canada, growing up in Canada, um, we are a little bit separated from a lot of that uh, original culture that started, mm-hmm. like, you know, in the East, New York, and then also the West, Los Angeles, right? Mm-hmm. Um, we're a little bit separated from it, so we get a little bit of a culture shock coming here. And, like, mm-hmm. you know, when I came here in 97, like I was saying, like, I wanted to paint, but I didn't. <laughs> and, and, I mean, <laughs> for, for, for many of my own reasons, yeah. right? Being young, 17 years old, didn't wasn't confident enough of doing it. It wasn't really, you know... You, know, you were young gun. Yeah, I was very, very young when I first started painting graffiti, man. I did take a little bit of a nap mm-hmm. from it um, in the late 90s, um, from about, the, like, I think, about 99 to about 2006, really? 2007. Really? Yeah, that was kind yeah, of Yeah, I enough. just took a break from it. For, Why was that? Just, just for... Um, I was working. I was busy. I had a whole other life going on, and I took a whole different path, and... You know, I got into oil and gas, and I started running a machine and, like, doing, doing all that kind of stuff, right? But, uh, you know, 
things didn't work out that way. That 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 that, that journey was not meant for me, and, mm. and, and and you know the path changed. And uh, really funny story. Make a long story short, but I you know I, I broke up with my, my 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 wife at the time, and and decided to uh, venture out and meet some new friends. And I went to a festival called Shambhala. Oh, Shambhala Festival. Okay, Shambhala Festival, everyone. Yeah. And I ran into an old friend from Victoria in in, in British Columbia, and he said, "Hey, man, do you still paint?" And I was like. I could. <laughs> In my head, I do, right? <laughs> and right then and there, I was just like, okay, but I'm not going to write the same name that I started writing. I changed my name at that point. And the reason I went with that name is because I always thought that, okay, well, like, fresh is like, mm-hmm. it's like the coolest word ever. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like one of those things that, like, even DJs just can't get it enough of. Yeah, oh, it's right, yeah. just like one of those words. Uh, it, just, it rings, right? Yeah, yeah. And I'm not going to, I'm, I'm very um, respectful individual when it comes to like you know the culture and the history of the words and and the names out there Mm. so i was like i'm not gonna write fresh like ph yeah yeah yeah. you know like i can't do that and even writing fresh itself was like not for me so i went with fresco Mm. and being that my 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 heritage is portuguese fresco means fresh so i just went with that wow and i I came up with it quick too i was like oh man what do i want to write like why i can't write night anymore it wasn't really my thing anymore so that was your original yeah night night, night, yeah yeah, like like Mm. night in the night yeah yeah Yeah, it was i get you yeah you know what i mean like i know where you i know where your head goes but you know for what it was for what it was and for my age at that time it was like really cool right it was like get out in the night sneak out in the night and you know write your name kind of thing you know it was cool but no when it comes to london man when i first came here um it it was definitely um more rigid and the scene was like a, it was put together, you know, with a, a, a group of different crews. Mm. And it was like, you know, either you can paint here, you can't paint here, and you should probably put your camera away. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And I, I, I stood around for about four hours just to get the photos so that I could finish what they were doing so I could get the photos, man. Damn. And I still have those photos, man. They're in a book at home, you know? But... Each each couple of years, I, I I came back and came back, and I mean we're now in 2024, and that was 1997 when I first came here. So, wow. it's a whole new world. Yeah, it's a whole new world, and 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 now the UK is like really really getting noticed and recognized on an international level for like very top high grade graffiti. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and like you know before it wasn't really like that, you know, yeah. like until maybe like the you know 2010. When things started to happen, and now it's like I mean, like like I said, I come here for an international event that happens annually every year in South End, Essex, um, South End by the Sea, and yeah. uh, two, three the, the amazing group of individuals. Um, I don't need to say names, but they put on this they put on this event. And all those all those guys are amazing people. They they've been doing this longer than me. Longer than most, and the way that they're they're handpicking and selecting everybody to come together for this event is absolutely extraordinary, man. Yeah. Like, and it's such a blessing to be a, be able to be a part of it. If I can't make it, it's all good. I'll make it next year, kind of thing. Yeah. But um, yeah, the the culture and the growth that uh, I've seen happen in the UK is is unbelievable, and you know now now um, as I feel it, so should be. Is is the, the the presence in the world with like you know mm. the skills yeah. that, that came from and have come from here? Yeah, yeah, absolutely, man. The Street UK's, art has kind of it has created its its own lane of opportunity for people to particularly like you know your your eyes and your ten foots and your your Mister Doodles and I, and I guess you know the Banksies of the world. Yeah, you know it's like a whole different way of being introduced to graph on a deeper you know, more guttural level. Absolutely, man. And like every time I come to London, it's like, oh, there's something new. Whoa, yeah. whoa, whoa. It's it's a very active, proactive city. Yeah. You know, you go yeah. paint Leak Street. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go go there at 9 a.m. and paint in Leak Street and you're done by <laughs> noon. <laughs> come back at 4 p.m. and see if you're still there. Yeah, <laughs> Good <yeah>. luck. Because <laughs> it's very progressive. Is that like, is that like similar to Vancouver or Victoria or Calgary? Like, no, 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 absolutely not. You know what? Um, we have like um, it's like a we have like kind of like a, a dual culture there. We have the train culture, yeah. And the people who paint trains and they don't really they don't really paint walls that often. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we have the people who kind of paint paint walls a lot because they don't really have the trains available to paint. Mm-hmm. And it's it's a little bit of a split culture there. But um, 
by no means are you really getting painted over that quick. And if you're getting painted over that quick, well, that's just because some somebody's either got it out for you, yeah, yeah. or 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 you're just bad timing. I don't mm-hmm. know. It's it's graffiti's never permanent, you know. That's right. the thing about it. Nothing lasts forever. And, mm-hmm. and if you did it, you know, like unless you're getting commissioned to do something or it's a legal wall or something. You don't own that wall, and anybody can paint over that if they really want to. So what's, you know the, what incentives? I mean? so, so what's the incentives of graffiti writers, do you think, to m- retain their um, presence in the street and actually accept that that is the course of path? Yeah, you know, that's a really good question. I feel like any other individual who becomes, like, obsessed and, and, and also um, invested. Mm. You know, mm-hmm. like once you become in love with what you're doing and you get that sense of uh, clarity and, uh, you know, power within yourself, mm-hmm. discipline um, to do the things that you love doing without anybody's permission nor, mm-hmm. you know, um, you know, um, grace, you mm-hmm. know, like to do so. It's just something that you, you love doing. And I, I, I don't speak for everyone, but I do speak for myself when I, when I say this, that graffiti for me, I mean, I, I, I changed schools a lot when I was young. You know, I, I was around a lot. And for me, it was, it was a place to kind of go out and, and, and be me mm-hmm. and, and excel in a way that would keep me kind of out of trouble, mm-hmm. so to speak, you know, like... Um, Everybody, everybody has their path, and everybody bounces in and, in and out of their path all the time, right? But for me, graffiti, it really did keep me out of trouble, and it kept me creative, and it kept me focused on like things that were like probably better than some of the other things I could have been doing, right? Mm. So, a lot of people say that the, the graph is like the almost like the entry path to wider criminality. I always find that interesting. I guess it's like the broken window effect, isn't it? That is that's that's definitely it, man. You know what? It, it, Sadly, but true, a lot of people who do get into graffiti, mm. if they get out of it, mm. it's it's one way or the other. Yeah, it really is. Yeah. You know, either they end up in in jail, com- incarcerated, or or they end up being like a serious businessman <laughs> and never touches a <laughs> spray can again. Or, yeah, or, or you know what I mean, like or or they end up being a businessman and still doing spray paint once in a while. Can that work? Oh yeah, for sure. I've really? seen it happen. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Or going absolutely. out and doing size of trains and then, and then <laughs> donning a suit at seven thirty. Yeah, and then going to courtside. And... <laughs> yeah, exactly. Don't worry, just you know, <laughs> bill me. I don't care. I don't know if that's actually <laughs> if that's been done, care. but yeah, no. I think if you're if you're if you love what you do, and you know, um, it does good things for you. It doesn't really matter what your 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 side job is or what you're doing in your life. You can always make time for those things that are really good for you. And of course, you know everything in moderation. You know, like I I'm getting on my own age. I'm 44, and like mm-hmm. no, yeah, I, I I love to get out and go do my 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 shenanigans mm-hmm. once in a while. Sure, yeah, for yeah. sure, right. But uh, for me at this point, it's like really just about connecting with other people around the world and painting burners. And doing projects together, and doing murals, and and building relationships, and 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 making business relationships yeah. as well, right? The, so the relationships are really important, yeah. That's right? where it's at. That's that's yeah. what it is for me, you know. And like just it, it's humbling yeah. man, to just meet as many people, you know, and mm. and and learning too. Like you know, I'm always learning, you know. Like it, this is an amazing, amazing um, culture where there's a lot of hidden talent. Like you would think that. Everybody would be on the outside, mm. showing their name and showing their front, right? But like, there's a lot of talent out there that's remained quite quiet and yeah. like just does their thing on the side, but like, is super talented. And, like, I guess it really is all uh, in the individual, essentially, right? Yeah, and, and what they really want to see from it, and and and, and so far, right? yeah, so. for sure. Oh, by the way, at this point, big up, um, Matt the Alien. Yeah. Oh, our guy, big up Matt. Yeah, big Absolute up Matt the dog. alien, yo. Yeah, proper. Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Shout out, shouts to Matt, dude. Much love, dude. And it's so amazing seeing you continue doing your thing. You're mm. a beast, man. Keep on bringing those bangers. Yeah, keep yeah. the bangers banging. Yeah, yeah, dude. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. Um, I've traveled a lot around Canada in my more informative years. You understand? Yeah. Uh, and yeah. feeling that. I always got with. In fact, you know what? I'm going to dial in a little bit more on Vancouver here, right? Yeah. Vancouver to me seems really like compartmentalized. There's some people that are in the scene that really aren't in a scene, and then these scenes are like not the same. <laughs> How does that even work? Well, Vancouver, um, like it's a it's a very in and out scene. 
Yeah. Um, it's like, how do I explain this? If you live in Vancouver, you could literally have three different lives and live them all at the <laughs> same time. You know, it's a it's a very interesting place that way. Um, but as far as the culture, I mean, Vancouver has their crews, and Vancouver has their legendary dudes that mm -hmm. still have their crews. Mm -hmm. And they still do their thing from time to time, and we have the the walls that are that are there basically available for the crews to, to do their thing. Do the thing, yeah. Yeah, and, and there's a lot of legal walls in Vancouver all over the place too. But I, I think what uh, what it's really come down to for anyone who's living in Vancouver who's been there for a while is about getting out of the downtown core area and finding all those like really really beautiful river spots with train bridges mm. and getting out and adventuring and being more like outdoorsy about yeah, it, right? Because yeah, yeah. I mean. There's only so many walls in Vancouver you can paint. You can paint, you can paint, you can paint, but in the end, yeah. you eventually just want to make it special. Yeah. I feel, yeah, for yeah. myself. Taking anyway. it to, an, to, to that next level of curiosity of like, what? Yeah. How, where? How did, you know? Yeah. Like you say, because the wall always stays the same. Yeah. Just different. You know, yeah. yeah. Like, well, like, you know, big up to Zoner, you know? Zoner. Bam C, Zoner Bam C. He's a, he's a Vancouver, he's a Vancouver guy. He's been painting probably, oh, fuck, I don't, I don't know, man. Probably, I don't know, 15, 20 years. I don't wow. know. I don't know him personally very well. But uh, this guy, he does repel. And he repels and does amazing stuff. He's been coming down to like Los Angeles, going down south, like all over the place. Oh, shit. But he's a Vancouver guy, and he's actually been really, really inspiring. Watching his work, watching him excel. The guy is a beast. Amazing, amazing artist. And uh, I actually um, I, 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 I sent a little invite, I, like a message to uh, Steve Ecto. Big up, yeah, big up, big Ecto, up Ecto, and, big and, up. and Stir. Love you guys. Yeah, hold tight. Um, yeah, man, those I, I sent him, you know, an invite, but he's been a busy guy. He mm -hmm. he does his like, you know, his art on the side as well, and he's yeah, a tattoo yeah, yeah. artist. So, you know, he's Serious a busy cat. he's a busy individual. But like, there's just art, there's artists like when it comes to the scene, I kind of look at like you know some of the most progressive artists that are happening in the, in the scene there, and what they're doing. Mm. And it seems like everybody what they're doing is they're leaving. Oh, so you're study, so you'll study, you'll you'll dial in on a scene and get get all the intel on the That's ground. That's right, and then God, I love that. Yeah, yeah, and then and then figure out what they're doing, and then be like, okay, you know, maybe that's where it's at. Yeah, you know, but. Vancouver's beautiful and it's a beautiful place yeah, to, to, to hang out. It's nice temperatures for painting pretty much all the time if it's not raining. And it's, if you like the outdoors and do adventure, you can find amazing places to yeah. paint. Man. And, and like, the music seems to actually, by this, at this point, I should also shout out. Big shout out to Emotions as well. Oh, yeah. Emotions. Big Can't up. Love, like, Big uh, up. Swallow members yeah, um, as yeah, well. Yeah. All tight swallow members. I yeah. mean, God, they, I'm really going to open a good, good that's, hornet's nest. That's really rad that you mentioned Dave, up. dude. Dave's yeah. a really good homie. Good people. Love that person. He's a right don, man. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Proper, proper absolutely. J Swing. Um, uh, yeah. And flip out. The dons, man. <laughs> They've been doing their thing for a yeah. long time. Those guys yeah. are legendary, man. It's been. Yep. But he's in Seattle now. But yo. All these, all these guys yeah. from the radio, man. Proper. Kilo C. Mm, Kilo C. Hold tight. Kilo yeah, C. Yeah, Kilo C. Yeah. Kilo C. Big up Kilo C. I He's was, still I was really thing, lucky, man, like, you know, to, to have the agent I had at the time and was able to, you know, elevate, manager, yeah. should I say. Yeah. Um, rest in peace, Sean Lala. I yeah, say. rest in peace, yeah. Um, yeah. You know, it, it was a, a very flourishing time. Oh, man, and he was such a bright light, yeah. such a nice guy, yeah. such a, like, you yeah. know, people person. And, yeah. and and every time, you're you know, you see him at the party, you're like, ah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. the party's on. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> like it was really... so many people through, you know. Yeah, you know, yeah. gotta respect that. Gotta respect it. Absolutely. Um, give us some more. Names. <laughs> Continue with the hornets nest that we're unraveling. <laughs> uh, give us some more key names that you think that you know duly deserve their props so far as shaping the Canadian scene. Oh, and shaping the Canadian scene yeah. now. Okay, well, oh, we're going to yeah. have to reflect on... These are new names for us now. So <coughs> get your intel ready, oh, well, people. I, I would say Quest. I mean, I have to say Quest. He's king of the freight. He yeah, still is. Quest, though. Quest is a bad man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, okay, Quest and the whole BSM crew, mm -hmm. you know, BA crew. All those guys are old school legends, man. You know, like Cider, he's, he's still doing his thing, man. Burning kids, you mm -hmm. know, burning kids still to this day, and I right. think he's like you know a couple of years older than me, and yeah, all those all, all those guys, yeah, man, BA crew, um, yeah, man, like there's there's plenty of them, you know. Um, v Victoria has a lot of guys that shaped and helped yeah. like and create the, the the West Coast scene out there too, and I found that like 
a lot of them are from Victoria or out east. And they kind of back and forth from Vancouver to Toronto a lot, you know. Um, the traveling thing is key, isn't it? With I, I, such a widespread of a country. Yeah, Bacon's another one from Canada. He, he's done some amazing stuff. But um, who's the gentleman that's got that, that is paralyzed? That does the take five. Take five. Yeah, and there's an OG. Absolutely. Yeah. Proper. Absolutely. Big up, dude. Miss you, homie. Yeah. Hope you're doing good. Yeah. Yeah, that's a that's a yeah. that's sick a DJ another. too. Yeah, probably. <laughs> like, seriously, these are champions of nature. Yeah. You yeah. Know, yeah. Doing absolutely. what they do, and do you think it's in the DNA of like people that you know that signed up to? The street culture thing. Maybe it's 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 by hook or by crook. Yeah. Well, if if you had like any jazz records in your house when you were growing up, you definitely ended up doing graffiti or doing <laughs> something like that. You know what I mean? Like a Miles pay, Davis yeah, paint. Yeah, you shit. know, totally, dude. Absolutely. <laughs> if you had any jazz music growing up in your house, you would definitely rattle cans yeah, for sure. For, real. for sure. Yeah. What was, the, what was the influence of growing up for you? Were you into, you know, was it was it hip hop all the way through? Or was it? No, actually, it started with like punk rock and like, uh, like kind of like heavy metal, and then nice. I, and then I got into the hip hop like shortly. Exactly after. Exactly the same as me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like just shortly after, and it was like yeah, nineteen ninety one, ninety two. Anthrax, Public Enemy came and oh, changed the world, right? That, that was amazing <laughs> stuff. Man. They 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 shut the casket. When doing that song, that's yeah. like you can't even re- replicate that. Yeah, that's the old time. <laughs> Never mind, walk this way. No, walk away. This is the one, dude. Goosebumps, man. That it's stuff was heavy. Real. Yeah, that was heavy. That was. Watch <laughs> oh, like fuck yeah, off, well, dude. Dude, yeah, yeah. Still, I get goosebumps even talking about it too. Oh man, and to see to, to see that kind of stuff perform live too would be just unreal, unreal. The energy back then, you know. I'm not taking away from anything that's happening today, but I guess you know it's just everyone has their 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 decade that they really really liked. You know, something what I mean? hits you at a certain you age. You know what I mean? The absolute thing you get off on, isn't it? Yeah, and like you know, the '90s were definitely just. You know, I, I have that in my blood for the rest of my life. Yeah. I am constantly evolving and changing and doing things, but I really have a deep appreciation for a lot mm. of things that happened in the earlier '90s because it was kind of like you know pop culture at its purest. Got a question for you, because over the decades of me doing this and the beatboxing and stuff, um, it's not that I lose the passion for it, but I know that's my um, that's uh, <laughs> that's my work job. So far as it's the best outlet that I can do, that I know whatever it is, but that I can do to the maximum. So what my interest in learning a lot of that, you know tenfold over something that you know i love break dancing yeah. i ain't even never gonna do it but i've got this kind of more different kind of passion for it that does sometimes lean back to a certain era or yeah. if something really jumps out at me do you think is that the similar sort of thing for you and graph absolutely man absolutely i mean i look at people doing some of the stuff they're doing today and i'm like no i can't do that yeah. shit. but then it pushes me to kind of like do more of what I'm doing yeah, yeah. And, and follow my own instincts, man, mm-hmm. because, you know, I know what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Don't doubt what you're doing. Mm-hmm. You know, it doesn't mean you have to do it completely different. But you know what? It's nice to get those those creative juices flowing. And it, it helps with the whole motivational thing, you know. Every every couple of years, I switch it up a little bit and, you know, start doing different techniques and different styles. But it all stems from the same place. And it's all just being inspired by other people who are doing great yeah. things you know yeah yeah but how like, do you maintain that 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 that, that mm. motivation yeah oh man oh, it's a it's a few different things obviously one of them is is surrounding myself with people who know me mm. you know don't don't waste your time hanging around with people that don't appreciate you because th- we'll that, talk. life's too short th- yeah it's life's too short for that kind of you know so i just surround myself with people who you know appreciate me love me and they know you know they're like if i'm like looking kind of stagnant mm. they're like uh you need to go rattle some cans yeah, yeah, yeah. like now like my wife will do that really for example i wasn't actually going to come out to the, the jam this year because i have other responsibilities and i just recently moved from canada to the philippines so i have some things going on there that require my assistance and require yeah, my yeah. presence right yeah. and i decided to like not go and it was about a week after counseling and i was starting <laughs> to droop my face was starting to get droopy and my wife she's amazing she's like you know what you better go yeah because yeah, if yeah. you don't you're gonna be really cranky yeah. for like 
Who knows how long? Anyway, get that Willy Wonka so, ticket so, out. So, so, so she's like my number one supporter, man. You know, and I have had good family in my life too. My father, growing up with my father around, he always was supportive, man. He'd bring me like the free paint that he got from work and stuff like that. Damn, and, son. Like, like, yeah. You know, and like just things like that, man. I've had good support in my life when it mm-hmm. comes to like being creative. Yeah. So that's definitely been one of the big ones. But for me personally, when I don't have anybody, it's just like just remembering who I am and what I've done and just like opening up my page and going mm. through and looking at what I've done. Mm. That really helps because it's like, this is your resume, man. This talk, is to me about the black, but talk to me about the black book situation with you. You must have like a crazy black book. Oh, man. Um, I, haven't, I have many crazy black books, but um, I think most of my black books now is just like... I create now, man. I, I my iPad. I guess when it comes to like yeah. black books, I'll work with a little bit of digital. The procreate business. But but now, dude, I don't really practice in a, in a black book. I mm-hmm. just I just get a canvas and do it. I love you whispering to the microphone. Yeah, I'm, like, uh, I'm not saying don't do the cro- <laughs> like you know don't the, the black zombie, book right? stuff, man. Like black book work is really important, right? But for me, just because I'm so busy, you know, I haven't really had that much time, really honestly, to just sit down and start a new black book yeah. and kind of go through it. Because it is one of those things that takes about maybe, you know, this, it's, for, it's there for whenever you, mm. you want to use it, right? But if it sits there for more than five, six days and starts collecting dust, it goes back in the shelf and I don't use it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right? So a black book's like something that, you know, what you're going to be using it every day and putting mm. something in it every day, maybe three, four times a day. It's a lot. Of, it's a challenge. A lot. Of yeah, yeah. Times. And, it's, and, it, and it's, it's one of those things that, like, you know what, maybe... You know, it, it, it's all about what you're doing with the, all the other time that you spend, in, you know, in your life. And mm. if you got time to have a, 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 a black book in front of you, like say you're working, you know, like re- real t- retail or something like that, mm. where it's chill and you can have your black book mm. and you can be working and whatever, and that that that's tight. Yeah, man. But for me, it's like I'm constantly socializing and having to like stay busy yeah. and doing stuff, moving it along. So even carrying a black book with me when I when I when I roll out of town, it's it's it can be a little bit of a hassle. Yeah, it and it can get damaged and stuff like that. So, uh-huh. but black book work is where it's at, man. That's how you build your skills. You know, it's really ultimately how you build your skills, right? Yeah. Learning your letters, learning your style, practicing with styles and yeah. stuff like that. But that's really just theory. Because as soon as you pick up a spray can, it's completely it's different. A whole different game. <laughs> you know what? I, I like the black books that are passed around. Yeah. I like the ones that are passed around because that's just real momentary, you know. Whether it's just a you know a load of tags on a page or it's pieces, do you know what I mean? It's, a, it's kind of a snapshot of what's, what's really going on for its time. Yeah. And that becomes like the annual. Yeah, 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 absolutely. It becomes the, like the, the Bible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It tells a story too, yeah. you know, like the... You know what? The ones that get passed around, that's 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 amazing. Yeah. Those are amazing. Yeah. And those should be those should be like cherished and kept and safe. Yeah. You know, like in that kind of Wu Tang clan box yeah. one only kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Because those are those are when the ideas were born. Yeah. You know, and also like, you know, the ones that get passed around, I mean, how many people are putting their work in that? Yeah. That actually is really, really, really a special thing. Mm. You know? So Also yeah. big up Ashley, my girl Ashley, who's based out in uh, in Canada as well. Nice. Um, Toronto's big got a banging. Big, big up my wife, yes, Sarah. Of course. Love you. Um, <laughs> Toronto's got a banging graph scene, hasn't it? Yes, it's it's, it's another different, whole different world. It's like aggressive. It's, it's, got it, it's a it's a it's a more uh, aggressive graffiti yeah. scene where people are actually out painting over people a lot more often yeah. and trying to hold down different areas of the yeah. town and bur- different boroughs. And yeah, all. it's when you lose the it's, favelas. Yes, it, well, it's when you lose the Western <laughs> Sea, isn't it? Then all of a sudden things ain't quite so laid back anymore. <laughs> the aggression's on. Yeah, it's definitely more progressive there for sure. Yeah. Um, the scene in Vancouver is, is, is pretty relaxed. I mean, there's always going to be the, 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 the heavier dudes out there that want to hold it down a little harder. Mm. But um, the culture out there is pretty relaxed, man. People mm. are pretty, pretty, pretty peaceful people out there, you know. As you know, marijuana was legalized in Canada a few yeah. years ago, so yeah. everyone's just smoking. It's all good. Everyone's just chills. Do you smoke? Yeah, 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 of course. Everyone, everyone, once it's legalized, it's all, yeah. it's all smokes away. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's any matter of time it's going to happen here. Yeah. I think I think it's it's a matter of time until it happens everywhere because eventually the government's going to realize that well they can make a little bit of money off of it and people are, have a lot more chill. Yeah. The police are funny that are, you know, yeah. funny that right nicer people yeah not so much alcohol consumption and more just contemplating and chilling yeah and what they want to eat that yeah. night and what they got to do in the morning yeah. or whatever you know yeah. all of that. <laughs> what's the philippines saying the philippines it's yeah. super beautiful slow style country man people there they walk slow they eat slow they hang out they talk a lot it's lots of loving and they sharing. amazing food they got amazing food amazing food man it, it's 
it's a beautiful thing. I'm, I, I, I'm so happy. I honestly can't wait to get back, but I love it when I'm here too, right? Yeah. But um, I, I love it there, man. I, the food's amazing. The people are very well spoken, well, very polite, and you know, um, they're there's all sponges, man. Mm-hmm. Especially like you know, for like to me, for me in my situation that I'm in, like um. I go there and uh, I'm doing large productions and doing big burners and mm. meeting with the people that are there local and every single person I've met with is just super cool. Chill. Chill, super cool, super keen, really eager to get out and paint and really, like, you know, down to earth people, man. Like super down to earth and f- funny as well, man. That's, it. <laughs> that's, that's a new way of doing it. Big yeah. <laughs> if only you right guys on. could see what's going on here. Yeah, it's too funny. <laughs> something, something's on fire right now. <laughs> yeah, big big up to the Philippines, man. The Philippines is a beautiful place. Um, yeah, you know, I got love for them over there, man. You know, yeah. it's uh, you know, not long ago we were in Manila, and uh, we, we we planned a flight to go to Naga to go home to our to our place. But the flight got canceled because it got what? rained out. And we were, like, going to wait, right, for another flight. We decided to say, uh, you know what, we're just going to get on a bus. Then we caught the bus. And only hours later, like, I think about maybe eight, eight hours later, Manila flooded and got flooded really bad. What? <coughs> Excuse me. Yes, the whole city, Manila, got flooded. It was so one of the worst close. floods. Yeah, it was that close, that close. You see, the, the, you got to have a lot of admiration and, and love and respect for these people because they still walk around really happy, really proud, mm. and doing what they have to do to get through. And meanwhile, their whole house got rinsed out by mud and water. You know, um, it's just... Well, love, it's, respect. It's, it's just one of those things that we take for granted a lot, living in a lot of, you know, the places that we do live in. Yeah. It's, we're quite fortunate that we don't have those natural disasters yeah. and stuff. So I think in knowing that about the people, it makes you really truly understand how they are as people and yeah. what's important to them. What's important to them, And yeah. what's important to them is family and food, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, everything else is just, you know, whatever. It's business, take care of business, but... Very passionate You've people. You've really got a really, people, really worldly view on things, man, and it's testament to the travelling. And I, I guess the more you open your mind to it and your wallet, you create more friendships and develop more experiences. <laughs> your wallet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the wallet. The wallet's been open for a long time now, but you know it opens and closes, and it opens and closes, and yeah. it opens and closes, and opens and closes, and it's it's always you know. Uh, uh, give and take, give and take, yeah. give and take, give and take. So, you know, I'm very fortunate enough to be able to do what I've done the last few years. And I mean, bless up to everyone who supported me doing it. So, yeah, man. you know, um, you live once mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, just be humble and, and love, man. Mm-hmm. Spread that love and be humble. You know, it's not worth being stressed out about certain things. You, yeah. know? And, you know, at the end of the day, uh, if, if you're coming home from whatever you're doing and you know what, you're, you, you got a little bit of happiness in you, you know, and you're good, that's all that matters, man. Mm-hmm. You know, it doesn't matter. You know, I think that's where a lot of people are headed mentally anyways these days, man. You know, like the, the whole idea of, of establishing yourself as a, a super, super wealthy human being. Mm-hmm. I mean, I mean, sure, you could devote your life to money and doing that, but I mean, is it bringing you happiness? If it does, that's great. But I mean... From my experiences, mm. happiness, true happiness doesn't come from being really wealthy yeah. or, or rich with mm. money. It comes from being rich with love yeah. and, and rich with, like, you know, um, integrity, mm. you know, and, yeah. and meaning. Yeah. Right? You know, like, it's like when we get really old and we don't have meaning or any purpose, it's when we start to kind of wither a little yeah, bit. Yeah. And as long as you've got meaning and purpose in this life, you'll live a long time, you know? Just take care of yourself. See, that's that Jerry Springer sign of shit. <laughs> Bravo, it's a pleasure having What's the future? The future is um, I'm going to be in the Philippines for a little while. And then um, we'll probably head back to Canada and, mm. and, and work a little bit for, I don't know, we'll see. we got to visit family, mm. right? And when we come visit family in Canada, we'll work at the same time, mm. make a little bit of money there. But i got a business in the Philippines with the family, and we're pretty self-sustainable, you know. So I'm just going to kick it with the family there and enjoy the surroundings and, and help out a little bit as much as I can, you know, and... And uh, help develop the scene there. I'm, I'm hoping to get more involved with the, the meeting of styles there and all the surrounding meeting of styles as yeah. well. There's one in Indonesia, yeah. there's one in Thailand, and yeah, man. anything I can do to help and also uh, bring more heads there because yeah. let's just face it, the more people that are coming there, the more people are interested, the then the better, right? And then you know what? Like, 
I don't want to say capitalize on it because it's not me that would be capitalizing. It'd be more like the country's capitalizing yeah. on it and, and creating more opportunity for the people who do that kind of mm. stuff, right? You know, like meeting a styles in Mexico is incredible. It's incredible. It's uh, it's like three, four, five different cities where they paint. And wow. it takes a whole month and a half to do everything. What? Yeah. It, a lot of people didn't know that. Meeting of Styles Mexico is unreal. It, 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 they've been doing it for a while, and they, they take it really, really seriously, huh. man. Yeah. yeah. I'm not saying that nobody else does, but, I mean, if you do something enough and you like what you're doing enough, it's just destined to grow and grow and become more and more, mm. right? So, you know, if you become involved with something like that. It, Jump in feet first. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. Jump in feet first and, and play, the, play it out, right? Mm. You know? Like, that's, that's basically it, man. You know? And, just uh, be happy every day and try to stay healthy, you know? Like, eat well. Yeah. Try and dodge that fish and chips while you're over here, though, my brother. <laughs> oh, too late, too late. I already got the fish and chips, man. You need pies, eel, and mash. That's what you need. That's the next day. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'll throw the oh, eggs. You get in on that, yeah. yeah. Oh, man, it's spot. funny. I, I've been hitting Greg's up a lot, too. Yeah, Greg's is a... <laughs> Listen, that's our own. Yeah, it is. It is. It so is. good. Yeah, it's too good. It's too good. Man. It's too good. Well, all of that and the treats and more. Oh, yeah. What more do you want? Killer Killer podcast. That's it. Fresh go inside the place. Big up my Peace. brother. Ooh. Canada in the building. Philippines in the building. Right. You know what I mean, shout out to Scoffer and Nurks. Yeah, hold tight. Much Nurks. love, baby. All crew. Yes, you know what it is. SL. Um, yeah, out like that, in and out of fashion, and all that goodness from uh, the world of uh, Crime and Black, Killer Killer Podcast, out like that. Stay lucky, people. Don't talk to her, I wouldn't remember crime don't pay, but neither did they. <laughs> Take care, people. Easy. <laughs> <laughs> that was dope. That was dope. That was dope.